girls that are four, five, and six to say, in a couple of years, I want to get there. We start our quadruple header right now. And for that, we send it over to Dave Fleming. All right, Ravi, thanks very much. Very well said. What a cool scene it is. Huge crowds already here in Williamsport. A full day of baseball for you. The 73rd Little League World Series starts right now. I have never even thought I would be here as a spectator. I'm now here as a player. That's not a grin, you see. It's a spirit shining through. Not many people get to say, I played in the early good series with my twin brother. That's not laughter you hear. It's a dream coming true. This place is incredible. You can see what this means in the flash of a smile. The first time I saw the field, I thought it was amazing. I bet the grass will feel good on my feet. All the joy, the excitement, the tension, the love. The hits, runs, and gems play out on the field, but the heart of the game is found in the faces of the Little League World Series. And indeed, welcome to the 2019 Little League World Series. This beautiful facility with two full fields. We will start down the hill at Volunteer where kids and adults are here in big numbers to watch the Little League World Series get started. Lomity Stadium will host the next game. We got four games today for you as the Little League World Series gets going. What are we watching? This, of course, is a division of Little League International. 16 teams play in this modified double elimination tournament. The kids are ages 10 to 12. We play six inning games on a field, two-thirds conventional size, and yeah, minimum mandatory play rules. Every kid gets in every game. Hi, everybody. Dave Fleming alongside Kyle Peterson. All right, you and I have been coming here for a long yeah. time, and yet it never is not as exciting when we show up here for day one. When you see, I mean, these kids haven't been on these fields yet. They've been on the practice fields. They've been around the facility, but they haven't been on these fields. And, and you see a different look on their face when they walk out there for the first day. And for Australia and Curacao, they'll get us going on what is always a blast for the next 12 days. So these are the teams that are going to be here in Williamsport over the next 10 days on the international side, spanning from South Korea and Japan to Curacao, Venezuela, even a team from Italy here. And yeah, Kyle mentioned it, Sydney, Australia represented in game one. On the U.S. side, we got lots of geographic diversity and talented teams. Let's learn more about those U.S. teams with our friend up the hill at Lomity, David Ross. Hey guys, over here on the U.S. side, couple storylines. River Ridge, Louisiana, making their first Little League World Series appearance. First New Orleans teams ever here at this Little League World Series. Hawaii is back, trying to defend their title. 2018 champs, looking to be the 2019 version. And in the Midwest, Coon Rapids, Minnesota. Maddie Frecken, 19th girl here at the Little League World Series. And oh yeah, fifth year anniversary of Monet Davis. Looking to have some fun. Let's get this party started. Here we go. All right, Rossi. Uh, great to have him back with us as well for our Little League World Series coverage on the international side. Canada, Mexico, Curacao, Venezuela, Italy, South Korea, Japan, and Sydney, Australia. The eight teams representing the international side. And Kyle, sometimes we think we know, yeah. but really we have to wait and see these kids play on these fields. But give me some of your top thoughts going into on the international side. There's a few constants, it seems like, here on the international side. Japan is here every year because of the number of little leagues that are in the country of Japan. And they've won five of the last nine times. Jurjic Profar here. He's the third Profar brother that's played here at the Little League World Series. Only one other family can say that. And South Korea seemingly stays a long time. South Korea here again. We will see them later on here in game two at Volunteer. Yeah, so lots of cool stuff to get to know these kids, these players, these teams as we're just getting started. Day one here from Williamsport, and we got four games for you. The first three on ESPN, the nightcap over on ESPN2, Australia and Curacao. They are excited. We're excited. First pitch coming up next. First in game one, Sydney, Australia, a long way away. It took those kids about 30 hours to travel here to Pennsylvania. One of the world's great cities, Cronulla Little League in Sydney, and a great sporting city and country. You get all the outdoor space, and they are learning to love baseball in Sydney, Australia. Let's meet the kids from the team from Australia. Hi, my name is Blake Clary, and my favorite actor is Hugh Jackman. Hi, my name is Harrison Ford, and my favorite actor is Harrison Ford. 
Hi, my name is Matthew Trainer, and my favourite band is ACDC. My name is Ewan Cho, and my favourite baseball player is Addison Russell. My name is Lachlan Vela, and my favourite baseball player is Javier Baez. My name is Lincoln Grippler, and my favourite food is pizza. Hi, my name is Sam Levick, and my favourite MLB player is Wilson Contreras. My name is David Wilson, and my favourite food is sushi. Hi, my name is Jack Fletcher, and my favourite baseball team are the New York Yankees. My name is Lucas Gallardo. My favourite player is Yadier Molina. My name's Oscar Clout, and my favourite baseball player is Aaron Judge. My name is Zach Curtis, and my favourite food is tacos. Hi, my name's Michael Target, and my favourite MLB team is Chicago Cubs. Hi, my name is Max Miotto, and my favourite singer is Lil Nas X. All right, so our lineup's brought to you by Office Depot. It's always great to meet the uh, kids, uh, in this case from Australia. The pitcher that they will face for Curacao is uh, Shendrin Martinez, Kyle. So a lot of times you just learn about these teams by watching them take infield. And if you watch Curacao take infield, there's arms all over the place. This is obviously one of them. Biggest moment was winning a game to get to this point. Shendrin Martinez will get things started on the mound for Curacao. There's a lot of baseball history in that in that island too. Yeah, we'll no talk kidding. about it more as it goes. Well, let's more learn. On yeah, introduce our friend. Hello, Sebastian Salazar. Welcome. All right, gentlemen, how are we doing? Uh, where the heck is Curacao? Says their sign. Their enthusiasm tells you all you need to know about how excited this group of about 40 parents and friends is. They'll be especially excited <laughs> to root on Jordrick Profar. Of course, as you guys mentioned. One of three Profar brothers to play in this event alongside with Jurickson uh, and Jeremy. I spoke with Michelangelo Celestina. He's the assistant manager for this team from Coruscant. And comparing the three brothers, he said there's no difference either in their athletic potential or in their passion for baseball. The one difference they did note, yeah, Jurickson's a little bit shy. I spoke with him before the game, though. He says he talks almost daily with his two brothers. A lot of talk about the art of hitting and their advice for this Little League World Series, pretty simple. Play hard, have fun, it's an experience you'll never forget. All right, Sebastian, so here we go. The first pitch in Williamsport 2019 is a strike with uh, Lachlan Vela leading off for Australia. One ball, one strike to count. Well, the Curacao, you mentioned the arms. They feel like they have depth in pitching. Martinez likes to work fast. And a little grounder to third. Well handled by DeShandro Trump at third base for Curacao for out number one. It's always so fun just to watch these teams take infield for the first time because you can see the kids on this field, the way the ball flies across the flies across the diamond from Curacao. It didn't really matter who was throwing it. I mean, there was, there was big arms all over the place. Good quick out right there. Good footwork by Trump over at third base. So now Blake Cleary, who's not the biggest kid, but the uh, coaches for Australia say he is the fastest kid on the team. 12 years old, 5 feet tall, weighs 79 pounds, and sticks his nose right in there. Hits a ground ball to second. at Zion Pardo for out number two. We heard Sebastian say the big piece of advice was play hard, have fun. The have fun part doesn't usually seem to be a problem for the kids. No, no it's, I mean, from the time they show up here, Australia's been here the longest. And it's been the longest layoff, too. It's been 65 days since they played their last game against another team. So you know they're ready to get out there, and they've been at Williamsport for a full week already. Zach Curtis, first baseman, left-handed hitter, big kid. Takes ball one. The Sandlot. That seems to be the consensus favorite baseball movie. We ask all these kids so many questions about the stuff they like, the music, the movies. The Sandlot is no at the top of the list. It does. It's, I think it's going to be on the list for a long time. Sandlot's 25 years old now, and these kids are still watching it and loving it. That's what Kyle was talking about. 65 days, and it took them a, it was a 30-hour journey to get here, and so that's why they got here a week ago to get acclimated. All three to Zach Curtis. That would call the strike. Yanjia Huang is our 
home plate umpire. We get umpires from not just the United States, from all over the world. Umpires get a chance to come here one time and one time only. And they're a big part of the experience in Williamsport. That's ball four. Yan Jia Wang from Guangzhou City, which is north of Hong Kong, one of the biggest cities in the world. And he's traveled a long way to be here in Williamsport with us. The umpires at home plate, nice enough to wear the microphone so we can hear the sounds of the game, too. Here's Sam Levick, the catcher and cleanup hitter with the first base runner for Australia. Well, you and I have watched this country, Australia. It's been seven years now that they have had their own region. So they have had a team here every year for seven years. And we've watched the level of play rise. It's better and better. And, and regions are determined just simply by the number of participants in every Little League. So Australia now has their own team. Mexico has their own team. Japan has their own team. Canada has their own team. And it just shows you how much the game has grown in Australia, that every year now they have a team here in Williamsport. Both of these countries have told us that just being here has grown the game back at home. And, and fans are up early in Sydney watching this game. Outside, one and two. So it's very cool to see, and it's fun to watch year after year, the level of play just get a little better each time out Australia saying their goal is to be the best team from their country ever to be here in Williamsport. You know, I think the other one, too, is you, you've seen, you know, maybe not guys that you know, but you've seen those from your own country in this environment, you've seen them win. And so there's, a, there's an idea of a bit more confidence when you walk in here, when you get a chance. That's but a constant. Though. They always bring the inflatable Whoa. kangaroo. We need a live one someday. One think? of these years, I Absolutely. think you're right. Not just one in the stands here. Maybe just one live one would be good enough. Hang out up here. And lots of their uh, family members, friends are here supporting the kids. That is strike three call. Martinez knew it, so a walk but no runs. Curacao will hit when we come back. Off and running here in Williamsport, uh, Willemstad Curacao, the home of this particular little league. 150,000 in that uh, beautiful island nation, Curacao, which has produced an amazing number of great baseball players. Beautiful weather all year round. Let's meet the kids from Curacao, brought to you by Office Depot. My name is Zayn Pardo, my favorite of Ozzy Alves. Mi nombre es Tapes Riviere, mi un adolfo favorito de Ozzy Alves. Mi nombre es Anita Castillo y mi un adolfo favorito de Ronald Acuña Jr. Mi nombre es Isaiah Muco, mi un adolfo favorito de John Dasco. Mi nombre es Francisco Confesor y mi un adolfo favorito de Didi Guirigolias. Mi nombre es Xandria Martínez, mi un adolfo favorito de Javier Baez. Mi nombre es Kevo Rosina, mi un adolfo favorito de Ana Tansemos. Mi nombre es Farenzo Wouter, mi actor favorito de Kevin Hart. Mi nombre es Dijon de Trump, mi un adolfo favorito de Ozzy Alves. Mi nombre es Cleveland Clark y mi cantante favorito es Cardi B. Mi nombre es Curly Marta, mi actor favorito es Van Diesel. Mi nombre es Julie Rupfar, mi un adolfo favorito es Julie Sanprofar. Mi nombre es Leandro Coffey, mi un adolfo favorito es Derek Jeter. Mi nombre es Virgentlia Manica y mi jugador favorito es Ronald Acuña Jr. <laughs> All right, great group of kids in that country that just loves baseball and has produced so many great players over the years. So many great current big leaguers are from uh, Curacao and this particular team so excited to be here and feeling like they have a championship opportunity in Williamsport. There's a championship heritage from uh, Curacao here at the Little League World Series. Max Miato is the pitcher, a right-hander. He'll start game one for Australia. That's a good size 12-year-old now. 5'7", 175 pounds. The mound here at Little League Baseball is 46 feet away. And so 5'7", with that extension, he's going to release it pretty close to home plate. Well, the heartbeat's probably going a little bit faster than normal right now for Max. We can throw that first strike. Things start to slow down a little bit. And one thing that we will talk about all week long, all throughout this Little League World Series, first pitch from Miano is bunted out in front of the plate, and there's nobody over at first. So Sam Levick wisely did not throw the ball. 
The first baseman Zach Curtis came charging in and the second baseman was a little late getting there. No throw. That's one hit. Not that now. Leadoff hitter goes in there. First pitch not wasting any time. And you can see the movement. First baseman Zach Curtis charges right there and there's just not enough time for the second baseman to get over there. And Guy Zion Pardo can pick him up and put him down a little bit. He and you was know, on his way to first. You know what I love about Zion Pardo, who just got that bunt hit? He spent the whole time when we were getting to meet him talking about how many grand slams he's hit. <laughs> that was all a setup. That's uh, what it was. He, was. he wanted to make sure that information got out that he was going to drop the bunt down. He set us up. First pitch he sees in Williamsport. He gets a bunt hit. A curveball, and that one almost hit. Curly Martha, who is a kid that we are excited to see play just based on how the coaches have talked about him. Yeah, said that, that he's the most impressive player that they've seen since Yerickson Profart was there back in 04 and 05 at this age. It's pretty high praise for a guy that's been in the big leagues for a while. He hits that one to center field. Maybe not quite enough. Lachlan Vela is underneath it to make the catch. Nice looking swing. He didn't miss that by much. Not by much. I have a feeling that he's going to hit one or more over the wall before he's done. That's really going out on a limb after yep. you see that. Yeah, <laughs> well, you know, that's my baseball expertise coming through. The best kid we've had in Curacao at the Little League level since you're I bet Profar. he hits a home run <laughs> at some point. Uh, first pitch swing by the pitcher, Shendron, who had a nice first inning, walked one, allowed no runs. I was starting to say we will be talking about how there are no 13-year-olds for the first right. time. The age was moved and mostly just to sync up school and teams and kids in the same grade playing together. It just sort of makes everything easier in terms of friendships and carpools and putting teams together. But there has been an effect, I think, in that kids here in Williamsport this year, maybe we have a a few more on the smaller side. We've definitely got a younger field. There were a lot of 13-year-olds here last year. There were a lot. It was close to 40%, which was a little wow. bit surprising. Home runs were down a little bit in regionals, which would make sense. Kids a little bit younger, so the ball's not going to travel as much. The bats are the same as they were last year. So there's no difference in the bats. The change was made last year to make these bats perform very similar to a wood bat. Fastball popped up. And the second baseman... Calls for it and makes the catch. Lincoln Grupler, nice play. So two down. Let's meet the players brought to you by Chick-fil-A. Jurdrick Profar, who comes to the play for the first time. I mean, we, we just know the name so well. Both of his brothers have played here before. You mentioned it's only the second family to have three different siblings play in the Little League World Series. His brother's a second baseman in the big leagues right now. His other brother is playing at AAA, having a good minor league season. It is a great baseball family. We talked about it before we came on, just the history of the island has 160,000 people roughly. And you look at the number of big leaguers, Didi Gregorius, Andrelton Simmons, Kenley Jansen, Ozzy Albies now, who you heard that name a lot from these kids. Crown ball along the third base side, and Micah Target couldn't quite get it. Ball scooted by his glove. So stopping at second, Zion Pardo. Two on. I mean, think about that for a minute. I mean, pick your town of 160,000 people in the United States. That's the equivalent of the entire country of Curacao. Ground ball just in the right spot. Looked like it may hit the back, but just inside of it right there. So two hits in the first inning for Curacao. But 160,000 people putting that many people into professional baseball and that many guys into the big leagues. It just tells you how fast the sport has grown. It's crazy. And more and more players seem to be coming from Curacao. That was a good swing from Clay Winklar on the first pitch that he sees. The only triplet among our players here. Clay, we'll see him on the mound at some point, I'm sure. He's also a first baseman. He's kind of got the closed stance thing going at the plate. There they are, the triplets with his two sisters. It's a great picture. Colorful, that whole country, Curacao. And it's not just literally true, but the personalities. It's just a great place. And a strike three call. A good pitch from Max Miato. Nobody scores in the first inning. On to inning number two, nothing, nothing, Australia, Curacao.
need to actually say anything with these pictures to describe the great country of Australia? I should tell you about everything. <laughs> I think we need to go down and do the Australian tournament next year. I think that sure is prepared. such a good idea. You know? We'll visit the Opera House. We'll yeah. go to the beach, maybe do some surfing, some stand-up paddle boarding. Uh, yeah. Let's go there, Sydney, Australia. And it is, you know, Australia is such a great sporting country. And I think the hope for everybody who loves baseball is is that as they uh, embrace baseball more and more, I mean, they have a lot of great athletes in Australia. We're going to start to see some of those high-level athletes play baseball, and we're going to see more and more of them, I think, at the professional level. Play with an Australian big leaguer, Dave Nilsson, for a while. He was a great player. Was absolutely. He had a good run. Good. Inning number two, Curacao and Australia. And uh, Ewan Choate, who is the son of the manager of this Australian team, first pitch swing, right back to Martinez, one away. Guys, you mentioned it took this Australian team about 30 hours to get here. That was not the case for all the Australian parents, especially the families of Blake Cleary and Ewan Choate. They had a 12-hour layover in LAX. They got about four hours of sleep over a 48-hour total trip. Incredible stuff from the Australian parents. They say parents will do anything for their kids. Uh, I believe it. The Curacao parents as well, they had about 13 hours of total travel, and about 42 of them are here from the small island. And I guarantee you, every single one of them feels like it was all worth it just to be here and see their kids play. This now, just do it yourself. Two pitches in the <laughs> inning. I got it, fellas. I got it. Don't worry about it. I'll take it. Could have probably run it over there if he wanted to, too. Showing how unselfish pitchers are right there. They want to get everybody else into it. Two pitches, two outs here in a second. Who needs an infield? Ball one to the uh, Australian pitcher, Max. Had a nice first inning on the mound. a lot of cultural crossovers so American shows that become the favorite shows of the kids in Australia professional athletes basketball players baseball players that the kids watch a lot of these Australian kids told us that one of the things they're most looking forward to is the big league game that will be played on Sunday because they watch Major League Baseball oh, yeah. back at home but most of them have never actually been to a Major League game so they'll get to see one Sunday night. That is hit hard, but a nice play by Zion Pardo for out number three. All right, so he let an infielder make a play. He's a giver. Hey, Clay, do you have time for some questions? Yeah, sure. What is the last thing you ate? Pizza. Is a hot dog a sandwich? No, I don't think so. What's your favorite ice cream flavor? Rainbow Sherbert. PlayStation or Xbox? PlayStation. What is your favorite app on your phone? WhatsApp. Can we see your favorite emoji? Who is your favorite MLB player? Gary Sanchez. Can we see your favorite dance move? Nice. I recognize that. Yeah, you should. Learned it from you. You should recognize it. So you doing that last night. Oh, that's uh, my nine-year-old would have answered exactly the same way. Yeah. And maybe the same favorite player, Gary Sanchez. Kids love Gary Sanchez. And Clay's a little – we ask these kids, where would you most like to visit in the world? You saw it right there. Clay wants I, to go to Dubai. Clay's a smart kid. <laughs> I do too. Uh just outside, volunteer, inside, packed. That's a good vantage point, straight down the left field line. There's Nathan Castillo, the right fielder. Showed a bunt, takes ball one. Good pitching, both pitchers mostly throwing strikes. And the umpire, there, there might be a little language barrier with our umpire and our players in this game one, but I think that was the universal sign for stay in the batter's box. <laughs> yes, when you hold them in the box, that's generally a good indicator of I'd like you to be here a little bit earlier. That's a good way to, to make the point. One and one. Max Miato. A little off-speed pitch, huh? Curveball gets it right underneath the bat. To your point, though, these, I mean, these kids can come out throwing a bunch of strikes. 22 pitches in two innings. 
It's not a lot for Shendry and Martino out there so far. I mean, you and I say it Pitcher. all the time. Pitcher. Pitcher. The first game and the first inning of the first game, you just put yourself in these kids' shoes and think about what the nerves must feel like. Again, for these kids from Australia, they haven't played in two months in a, in a real game, and now you, now you do it here on this stage with all these eyes, and, and you've been thinking about it for the entire week that you've been here. They won the national championship. They've had all their friends and family for two months telling them how cool it is, how they can't wait to watch them play in Williamsport, what a great job they did. Two and two. Nathan Castillo, like so many of these kids from Curacao, speaks three languages fluently. It's a multilingual country. Oh! Close. Call the ball. English, Dutch, Papiamento. Lots of these kids speak Spanish as well. 3-2, and he got a piece of it. Just stays alive. Ball! Ball four. Castillo draws the walk. Well, we are really just getting started. Day one, game one, and the rest of the day's schedule go up the hill to Lomity for the first game on the U.S. side. Rhode Island against Virginia at 3 Eastern right here on ESPN. 5 Eastern, Kyle and I will be back on the international side. South Korea, Venezuela, that should be a good matchup. And then uh, the nightcap uh, on ESPN 2. Back on the U.S. side, a full day of Little League World Series baseball. So half the field gets their tournament started today. The other eight teams that don't play today will start tomorrow. The last 18 champions here in Williamsport won their first game. And Venezuela, the last to not do that. We'll see them tomorrow. It's not impossible, but it's very difficult if you lose game one. So if you have championship hopes, the first step is a big step. We'll actually see Venezuela tonight. Just kidding. <laughs> tonight against South Korea. They're all running together yeah. already. Yep. To Chandro Trump. We've already seen him make a good play at uh, third. That was a good play by Sam Levick, the catcher for Australia. Big personality behind the plate. You'll see lots of body language, lots of talking. I can look how low he gets, too. Sitting all the way down in that crouch back behind home plate and it immediately gets up that, that Little league move that you see no matter where you are in the world is immediately the pump fake to first base when there's a guy there When he's about a foot and a half off, but still Just feels right to do it. <laughs> well, you watch the big leaguers do it. Yeah. You want to do it Sam so many of uh, the coaches and his teammates described him as talkative <laughs> Ground ball and that one off the glove of Micah Target, so it couldn't quite handle it. Sometimes on a ball like that, you get caught in between thinking, should I go to second? Am I going to first? And sometimes that head can just peek a little bit too to see where the base runner is. First so two on for Curacao here in the second. Yeah, good chance for Curacao to score first. So the center fielder, Isaiah Mogan, one of the younger kids here in this tournament. Not a big kid, really good. They, they love his defense in center field. He bunts. That's a good bunt. And a throw gets away from first with a collision over there. One run is in. And another run will score as the throw is a little bit late. And hopefully the second baseman, Lincoln Gruplar, is okay. He came over to cover and take that throw. And he got hit. And you can clearly see that Mogan took a shot on his forehead, maybe off the helmet. Two runs in for Curacao. And hopefully everybody's okay. 
the bunt. You can see, look at the look of Moen right there. He's not quite sure if it's going to stay fair, then starts all the way inside. It's the throw, though, that's the challenge. So it's going to take the second baseman group or all the way right into the base runner's path, and there's really nothing either one can do right there. It looked like helmet kind of to the ribs. Yeah. Got him right on the, on the right side. That was a pretty good collision. And that's the kind of play, I mean, you see that happen at the big league level. Yeah, you're just trying to make a play. I mean, fully extended, trying to get the ball that goes all the way into foul territory. Nothing the runner can do. Just a baseball play that happens sometimes, but it looks like he's all right. Hopefully Lincoln can stay in this game. Take a little inventory, make sure everything's still working. Good for us all to take a little inventory I, I do it every day. Yep. All right, good news. But a couple of uh, defensive plays have uh, led to Curacao taking a 2 nothing lead. Kevin Rosina will be the hitter. Back to baseball. Still nobody out. Mogan who put down that good bunt is at second. Another bunt coming, maybe, but foul. Hey, guys, not to get too uh, sappy on you right from the jump of the broadcast, but when we watch this international bracket, I'm always amazed at the doors that baseball opens for some of these kids. You're looking at Kevin Rosina. He picked up a bat for the first time when he was six years old. I was just talking to his mom. Um, Natalie, she was overcome with emotion talking about what this sport has meant to her son. She said last year he went to Miami with a travel team. They won a championship. She said it transformed her son. He came home full of confidence, talking about his future. So, yeah, uh, it's about the baseball, but it's also about a lot more. You're allowed to That's get cool. sappy. That's right. There's no time limit on sappy. Not that I wasn't paying attention. I was to Sebastian. That ball with the defense in motion is going to land where nobody is. The stop sign at third, and now breaking for first is Rosina. A little blue pit with that defense in motion. Yeah, so showing the bunt puts everybody moving. Watch the middle of the field. So third baseman, shortstop are all going to be moving. Targets charging from third, which means you and Choate, the, set, the shortstop, is going to cover third. So they're trying to get the lead runner. Then he just hit it in a spot that nobody is. Obviously, natural spot right there. It's even Choate probably doesn't move his feet at shortstop. But with the bunt, defense in motion, works out pretty well. So another hit for Curacao. We're going to have a pinch hitter for uh, Curacao. That is Franjay Confessor. So Franjay will get a chance to swing the bat here. Already 2-0. He hits that one well to left field. Lined up and caught by Blake Cleary. But tagging from third. The throw now is going to go to third. And the ball not handled at third. I think it was going to be too late anyway. So that goes down as a sacrifice fly. Good little situational baseball for the pinch hitter. Front Jay gets the run home. 3 0 Curacao. First pitch he saw in the game. Right off the bench, gets a fastball, fly ball to left. The out recorded, so Australia finally gets an out. And now the kid that we talked about is uh, so talented at such a young age, and that is a bullet off the bat of Curly Martha. 4 nothing, Curacao. A little flash in those hands. Yeah. There's a little flash in those hands. It doesn't matter what the age. Sometimes you can see guys hit, see the way guys move on the infield. They just move different than others. This is a different move right here. Hands get set. Fastball's out away from them, but covers the length of the plate really easily. That, that is a pretty good set of hands right there for a 12-year-old. Still only one out. And now five runs in for Curacao here in the second. That's a combination of a lot of good at bats, some situational hitting, some good bunts, and a little bit of sloppiness from the defense, and it's become a very big inning. Our 
Martinez the pitcher today for his second at bat. Be the 21st pitch of the inning for Max. On the ground, knocked down, but no play. That was going to be a tough one no matter what, I think. Yeah, I, 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 I said 5 nothing. The scoreboard said 5, but four runs in so far. It's 4 nothing. Curacao. Here's Jerdrick Profar. I'm sure big brothers are watching. The third brother to play here in Williamsport. A chance to call your older brother, see exactly what it feels like. I'm sure he watched his, not Jerickson play, but Jeremy play here on TV. That was that play that you were talking about just a minute ago, too, because the move to get to this by the third baseman target is a great move. First step is great. Momentum's taking him towards second base, but the head just pops up a little bit to see where the base runner is, and then there's just not enough time with these 60-foot bases to recover. What's your first step? First step's good. Over in front of it, fields it off that left foot, just kind of crawls up the crawls up the glove, and Curacao has him loaded. Right, you're on a lot of strike, and you're doing a job for us. Okay? I'm going to take you out now. We need you, yeah. for, we need you for another game, so okay? All righty? Thank you very much, mate. Micah. Micah. You're hopping on the mound here, okay? Straight swap. Okay. You go to third. All righty? Hey. You're coming on, you're throwing hard, all right? Let's go. Thanks, Luke. All right, so a pitching change coming up for Australia, trying to hang in this game here. We'll take a break and come back right after this. A beautiful summertime day in Williamsport. It is game one. The 2019 Little League World Series is underway. We're on the international side. Uh, the U.S. Uh, kids uh, starting to get ready. We'll have a, a U.S. game after this one. And uh, fans have come out in big numbers on this Thursday afternoon from near and far to watch in game one, Australia and Curacao. It's been a uh, productive inning for Curacao. The bottom of the second, four runs are in. And the third baseman, Micah Target, comes to the mound. Max Miato, the pitcher, goes to replace Micah at third. <laughs> you like the nickname? I'm all in. Yeah. Yes. Uh, donkey. He is a big kid. Uh, donkey, that, that means that the arm's probably going to work pretty well, too. Yeah, you, you heard his pitching coach say, let's throw hard. And it's a spot where you'd like to get a strikeout if you could. Bases loaded one out. you got a force play at home plate if the ball's on the ground. We'll see. Clay Winklar, who okay. took some massive cuts in his first at bat, but ended up striking out up for the second time now. On the ground and right pass to Miato. That will score two, and they're off and running for Curacao. Six nothing. We don't see many double plays. If that one was fielded cleanly, maybe, maybe a chance for a double play. But Winklar gets credit for the hit and two runs batted in. Yeah, probably would have had a chance just because it's taking you toward the base. But a little bit quicker. But Curacao has put the barrel on the baseball really up and down the lineup the second time through. And we see that a lot here at the Little League level. If you hit the ball hard, and that ball was hit hard, a clean hit into left, a stop sign at third. And the throw behind, safe. Close, but safe. Winkler just got back. So one run scores. It is seven nothing. And those are good swings, just one right after the other. This is a kid, Micah Target, who's come in the game and is throwing hard. Ferenc Wooter will be the pinch hitter here. Remember, we've got mandatory minimum play rules, so every kid gets to play in every game, whether it's as a hitter or as both a hitter and a defensive player. Two on, still only one out. And a breaking ball. Not that. Got some good swings on a fastball. I got one of these.
Another good one. Strike two. I, I think it's a good pitcher's name. If your name is Target, okay. that's a good pitcher's name. I mean, I, I guess you could go both ways. I'd go catcher. You, you think you're going to pick a spot? Yeah, I okay. think Target would be. Yeah. I don't All know right. that you necessarily want to be a target yeah, on the mound. Maybe, but, but you're hitting oh. your target. Okay. It's better than Grant Balfour, who was an Australian pitcher. Okay. Ball four. I, I thought that was a bad pitcher's name. <laughs> Eric Plunk. That wasn't a good pitcher's name. Bob played, Walk. Played with him. <laughs> that one to the backstop, and it will advance glasses. one. <laughs> he Eric did. Plunk was top five glasses in the game when he played. Good call. Well, okay, so maybe you could you could argue both ways, but I still think hit your target, Mike. You can. You can argue both ways, but I'm. You're right. I'm right. wrong. Yeah. Okay. Ah, Just second. The first that's, time. That's, that's that's okay. <laughs> Second's okay for some. <laughs> two and two to the pinch hitter, Ferenc Wooter. Seven run inning and still going. Catch it. That was a throw from the umpire, so that's not a live ball. The catcher has to kind of be the bat boy and go get the, the foul balls that go to the backstop. Good. So Sam went and got that one. Still two and two. Oh! He likes that curveball. I don't blame it. <laughs> Two swings and misses on it earlier in this at bat. Oh! Ball four. Well, that loads the bases again. Curacao is a team that has had a lot of success in Williamsport over the years. It's the first appearance for this particular Little League since 2009, but, but Pabao Little League in Curacao has been here many times. Two championship appearances, the 2004 Little League World Series champs. And it didn't hurt that they had two big leaguers on that team. No, that generally helps. This is Lendrick Coffey, left-handed hitter with the bases Say that loaded. Again. Lendrick Coffey. Not that, which you said previous oh. to that, but that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> the, the fact that they had two major leaguers on a, on a Little League team. Jonathan I mean, that, Scope and Jerks right. and Profar. That's on, pretty cool. That is way cool. Uh, this was back in 2004. Profar and Scope were a part of that uh, Curacao Little League World Series championship winning team. And we got another Profar here as part of this team from Curacao this year. We got a kid, Curly Martha, that the coaches are saying is the most talented player that they've seen at the Little League level since Jerks and Profar. They're making a statement here on day one. Could be that they're one of the teams to beat. Three and one. Well, they're not swinging at pitches out of the strike zone. When pitches are in the strike zone, they're hitting them hard. That one a little jam shot, and it'll be what? caught. Good play by Zach Curtis. Two down. Well, if you're looking for training videos for coaches and umpires, you can get free backyard tips, practice plans, drills, videos, and more. Visit littleleagueuniversity.org. Great resource. Payson Rivieri will be the pinch hitter. Rivieri with the bases loaded in two outs. Foul tip that one. I think Jose Altuve is one of the favorite big leaguers for a lot of little leaguers just because they love aroma. You, you don't have to be 6'5", 250 to succeed in this sport. I think he's, he's one of the greatest role models for any kid growing up to watch because it, it shows you that Size isn't necessarily the determining factor. Inside, almost hit him. And if you saw that picture, too, that we showed of, of Scope and Profar when they were here, they were not the biggest on the They on were the not. Team. And they, they really weren't even close. And I think it's 
sometimes it's biggest, strongest, fastest at this age because other kids haven't quite grown yet, but it definitely isn't always. Good point. Fastball for strike three and the third out, but what an inning for Curacao. Seven runs across. Australia's got some work to do. Going to the third. Youth sports correlate with stronger relationship building and engagement. Staying active is really important. Obviously, tennis has given me a lot in my life. And instead of being at home on the couch playing video games, I was able to meet new people, see the world just through tennis. Being able to share that and show kids that being active and outside and playing sports and hanging out with friends is really cool. I think that's really important to really pass that message along that it's a lifelong journey. Visit projectplay.us to give sports back to kids. Well, as we go to inning number three, lots of kids in the stands here. Summertime is coming to an end. So for some of these, it could be the last few days before school is back again. What a place to spend your last well, days of summer. Man, listen, for some of these kids, it, it's that's a big driver, right? Some of their buddies might have already started at home. and Not quite yet. No. The longer you stay, the longer you don't have to go to school. I think that is true for for a Absolutely. lot of the teams, especially on the U.S. side. School is uh, in session already, and if you're going to be out of school, let's make it last. That's a strike. Shentran Martinez has just been really impressive. Not a super hard thrower, but one strike after another, and he throws hard enough. He also he can, now. can field his position. Great play and a big smile to match it. Seven out so far. Six have been ground balls and three have been back to the mound. So he's really fielding his position right here. And it's not like they're hitting it right back at him. Watch where Shendron has to go to get this one. A few steps, lay out. He knows he's got plenty of time. You also know you have backup. Zion Pardo, the second baseman's charging right there so even a big buy a second base was probably going to make the play but it's just easier to make it on the mound was there a guy that stood out to you in your career great fielding pitcher maddox was one of the best i mean he was it seemed like it was gold glove every year well Mar shendron martinez is almost like he's trying to have him hit it back to him sometimes you get that sense from Greg Maddox, that was a terrific play from Profar, the catcher. Yeah, it's athletic one to start, but watch his hands as he goes and does this. I hope Rossi's watching this because this is, you'll see kids at this age do it. So often, if the ball's moving, a kid will go down and try to bare hand it. Watch him scoop it. So it's glove and bare hand, scoops it into that glove real quick. You don't put it in there deep, but enough that you use that glove almost as a backstop when he goes to make the play. Plenty of space, throws inside. That is not an easy play behind home plate. He made it look that way. Well, we'll see uh, Jurdrick Profar on the mound, probably in their second game. So he's catching here today. When he uh, when he doesn't pitch, he usually catches. He used to be a third baseman, and he told us that third base was too boring. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just go behind the dish and make plays like that. That works for me. So he wanted to be in on the action. If you're not the pitcher, be the catcher. That one, a little liner, caught at first by Winklar. That's another 1-2-3 inning for Shendron Martinez pitching so well. Fun to watch the kids from Curacao play. They drop third strike, we've got to finish the play. And as a catcher, we got to make sure we're telling our first baseman which side you want it, inside or outside. You guys ready? Here you go. So it's early. Outside, outside. Good. Outside, outside. First baseman gets on that side of the bag. That's perfect. Clear yourselves from that base runner. It makes it throw a little bit easier. Now out front. Good. Get both hands, too, to go down and do it. Bare hand scoops that ball into the glove. Clear yourself of the base runner. It's a strikeout, but we got to finish it off at first base. All right, it's not a strikeout here, but the idea is still the same. A little swing and bunt out in front of the plate. Profar goes and gets it. Footwork's perfect. Does the hand go down. Heads right on it. Plenty of space in the first baseman on the infield side of the bag to make the play. That is really well done. Of the many things I look forward to in Williams, or one of the things I most look forward to are your building blocks. You too. I do. Well, why don't you commit a day early and you can help us sometime? <laughs> well, I said I love watching <laughs> you do them. <laughs> okay. That would kind of ruin the fun. I get to see him here in the booth. It's, yes. just, it's a great 
All right. you know, sort of spontaneous thing for me. I wouldn't want to get a wind of what you were doing ahead of time. I appreciate it. It's <laughs> very hard for I do love the way that the kids participate with you. You, you, uh, you get a lot of volunteers. So it was cool this year. We had a kid from every team. So we had 16 kids, a kid from every team that was down there with us. Zion Pardo behind of the count 0-2. He bunted for a hit on the first pitch of the game for Curacao. He set us up. He talked about his power and his grand slams and then bunted. Which he Got looks him. more he looks more like a bunter to me now that it, we've really seen him out there on the field. Two and two. He had a grand slam in the Caribbean region championship game. So that's a pretty memorable moment. It's that one foul. Not by much. Who's that? Richard Fraunheiser, our third base umpire. Made that call. Good call. That one right in front of the defense. Zion Pardo's two for two. Got himself a leadoff hit here in the bottom of the third. Draws the infield in. They think he may bunt because he did it the first time. Shoots it right over out in left field. That's Blake Cleary. Watch as he goes and gets this, too. Starts to lay out, but then gets himself in a position where he can keep it in front of him. So the ball's not going to get by him. Base runner still at first base. Two hits on the day for Zion Pardo. A bunt single to start it. A liner to left right there. And here is Curly Martha, who's had some really impressive swings. One for two, an RBI single. Took that curveball for a ball. And you know that Micah Target, the pitcher, already has uh, taken note of how good of a hitter this young man looks like. Doesn't even have to be a strike. He'll play shortstop. We'll probably see him pitch at some point. This kind of feels like the kid that you can just go, you know what, go, go to first. Yeah, go put the catcher stuff on. Go to left. You can probably put them about wherever you want, and they could work fine. One and one. Maybe a little geared up for the fastball. He wears number 12 because he loves Francisco Lindor. He crushes that one to left field. That is our first home run here in Williamsport. And it's not going to be his last. Nine nothing Curacao. The Dave Fleming home run call takes just three innings. You see the first at bat. We think he's probably going to hit one. Line drive his second time up, and that one right off the bat, he knew he got it. Didn't go out by much, but it goes out by enough. Break a ball up in the zone. That is a sweet swing. A 12-year-old right there. Recognized spin. Makes it 9 nothing. Curacao. Was that a little Edwin Encarnacion thing going on? I don't know. Sure I don't know if there was a parrot he was walking around the bases or not, but maybe just pointing to the muscles. Strike one to uh, Shendrin Martinez, who's just been terrific on the mound. Three scoreless innings. He's thrown 29 pitches total. Well, we did predict that uh, just watching Curly Martha take one swing in the first inning, yep. that he was going to hit some home runs here. Didn't take long. And it could be that that home run, you mentioned it, didn't get out by a lot. That one popped up behind short, and it drops in. Kind of no man's land. Martinez will take the hit. 
If one team has a lead of 10 runs or more after the fourth inning, or in this case with Curacao as the home team after three and a half innings, then uh, the game would end. There is a 15 run rule also in play this year that applies just for the first three innings period. Here's Jerdrick. He's up for the third time. The, po the point I was making about the home run was maybe with the old bats that goes a little bit farther. Oh I think it goes much further and, and to the point it could be more of an indicator of just a lack of home runs you're going to continue to see which I don't think is a bad thing. I mean he, he got it obviously but there's years that that would have cleared oh. maybe two or three fences out in left field instead of just at first. I think so. They've they've put in the bat standards which uh, it's a good thing. They put in the bat standards essentially to make these aluminum metal bats act like wood bats. Three and oh. Because I think Curly Martha got pretty much all of that one. His reaction. I mean, he, oh. he knows what a home run feels like at this age. And immediately the hand went up. He knew he got it. That's ball four to Profar. The inning goes on. So this, we, we will not have the 10 run rule here in this inning, but we could potentially have the 15 run rule, I guess, if Curacao were to keep uh, things rolling. They got seven in the second. Clay Winkler doubled in two runs in his last at bat. We're going to get a pinch runner. Special pinch runner coming in. Uh, Ference Wooter, I believe, who's going to run for Martinez. We're running out of pockets right now. All right, so th this is this is not your typical little league problem to where you have three <laughs> or four sets of batting gloves. These kids get all gear with all geared up when they get here. <laughs> First base coach right there. No. He's got three different sets of batting gloves when these kids come on. One in the pocket, a few in the hand. All right, so who's who? I have this kid's in yeah. this left hand, this kid's in the right hand. Father, nothing out. No outs. Good curveball. Very impressive first impression. I'm interested. You mentioned it. We may not see a ton of home runs in Williamsport this year. I'm interested to follow that and see how many we do see. No, I am too. I mean, it's we saw it at the collegiate level a few years ago, to where they changed the bats, the game changed a little bit. Probably changed too much, and then changed the baseball, and it's it's really come back to equilibrium. I think it's it's healthy and a good thing to do at this age. I do too. Our catcher Sam Levick at first could not find that ball. Found it. Both runners advance on the wild pitch. Not much Sam could do about that one. And when your pitchers are struggling, the catcher suffers too. He takes it personally. On the ground to short. Fielded cleanly. And that's the out. They are going to send the runner back to second. Profar just left a little early. Okay, so it's like the challenge flag out I there. See. All the umpires have it. And if you see that red flag go flying, it's because base runner left a little bit early. Clearly did right there too. You got to wait till the baseball crosses the hitter, and that time Profar just came off the bag, not aggressively, but came off the bag enough before that ball crossed the hitter. So one run scores. Profar has to go back to second with that flag. Like they're, they're going to bring the base runner back okay. to third, too. So, so if anybody leaves early, we uh, wipe the runoff for now. Back to third goes uh, the pinch runner, Wooter. So it affects everybody when you throw that flag. Everybody's got a hold.
Castillo. Strike one. Nathan got two at bats last inning, drew a walk, and knocked in a run with a hit. It's a good inning. It's okay. Right behind him. Now Wooter breaks for the plate and he will score. So the run does come in, even though they temporarily made Wooter go back to third base. It is now 10 0, and Profar advances to third. It's not a good feeling as a hitter right there either, because you just don't know. You're not used to going that way. You're used to backing away from it, but that breaking ball just got away from target. Right behind the hip. It's not a huge strike zone either. I think that's one thing Micah Target is struggling with. And, and I'm not picking on the umpire, but there's been some borderline pitches that have not been called strikes. It might have helped him a little bit. Nice play. Sam Levick oh. catches the pop up. Two down. Well, our, our first uh, NFL preseason game comes tonight, and it's the Raiders who are the talk of football in a lot of ways down in the desert to take on the Cardinals, 8 Eastern, right here on ESPN, special uh, edition of Monday Night Countdown at 7. Kyler Murray tonight? Kyler Murray's going to start like the it. game for the Cardinals. Former A's first rounder. Yeah, a great baseball prospect who has chosen football. When you're the number one overall draft pick in the NFL, I guess you chose correctly, but... Did you ever see him play baseball? I, I saw the video clips leading up to the draft. I saw him at OU, and, and some guys have a different speed, which obviously he does when he's on the football field, and it was so apparent on the baseball side. Real juice, was learning the center field position. I mean, he, he could have been a, a big leaguer and a really good big leaguer for a long time, but first pick in the NFL draft, that's hard to say no to. So that would be fun to watch him against uh, John Gruden's team tonight. One and two to DeShandro Trump with two outs. He got a piece of it. Three runs are in, and it is now 10 0 Curacao. So, no matter what happens for the rest of this half inning, in the top of the fourth, Curacao will have a chance to finish off the game. Australia is going to have to score to keep the game going. High and tight with the fastball. And now breaking for the plate and scoring. Profar heads up play. How about that? That's a kid who's watched a lot of baseball and is paying attention. It's the Little League special right there. Watch him leak off. So waits, waits, waits. Now you're just judging that throw and not a whole lot on it. It's 60 feet. If you've already made 10 to 15 feet of advancement towards home plate and the break is right, it's hard to make two throws quick enough to get him at home. Well, you mentioned it earlier how if there's a little bobble on the infield, I would put that in the same category. Defense at the Little League level is almost harder than at the Big League level. I would agree. Yeah, from a timing standpoint, I mean, you you just don't have enough time to make up for it if, if you misfield it at all. Full count, three and two on the ground. A nice backhand pick. The throw. Got him. What a play. Beautifully done by oh, you and showed. Go backhand side, set that right foot right in the dirt, throw it across. Good sign right there from Australia. They need some runs, though. They tread 11-0. Long yep. from Curly Martha, who hit a two-run homer, part of our Honda game summary, 11-0 Curacao. Australia, the longest layoff of any team here in this Little League World Series. And who knows, maybe that has hurt them today. Seven runs second inning for Curacao, looking very much like a championship contender. Yeah, the first game of this 2019 Little League World Series. And the Kangaroo, uh, they need some runs, don't they? 11-0 here as we go to the fourth inning. And if Australia cannot score at least a couple, then we will have that 10-run uh, rule in effect here in our first game. Harrison Ford. Favorite actor? Harrison Ford. Makes sense. Yeah. We were not surprised by that answer. Harry, a lot of his teammates and coaches call him. Takes ball one. 
I like how we put the exclamation point at the end of it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, not a whole lot of doubt about that one. You can, usually you can guess sushi, pizza, or hamburger for food. With Harrison Ford, we could tell that one was coming. 1-1, one, one, he hits it hard, kicks up, and Curly Martha stayed with it to make the play. I know one thing to, to keep in mind as we go through this tournament is just the amount of rest that you need. I think it's one thing to keep in mind in this game right now. Shender Martinez on the mound has been really efficient. 32 pitches, he's got 10 outs. If he gets two more, this ball game's over because of the 10 run rule. But if he goes over that 35 number, potentially couldn't come back in two days when Curacao plays again. The only thing I think to think about right now for Curacao is do you, you want to take him past 35 and make sure you can't have him in two days? Or do you let him get the hitter right here if it's quick, potentially go get another one, then turn to somebody else to get the final out? That's a good point. A little strategy here. Zach Curtis takes strike one. Zach drew a walk in the first inning. So if Curacao wins here, which obviously it looks like they will, they would play the winner of South Korea and Venezuela in two days. So you know you're going to need all the arms for that one. And that's a big pitch and a big out right there. It is. Just to your point. Now there's a decision to be made. And then we'll see what they decide. The uh, Little League Grow the Game grant initiative has distributed over $4 million to local Little League programs, providing funding Facility repairs and improvement to expand or establish softball challenger division and urban initiative programs. Lots of good stuff. For more info, visit littleleague.org slash grow the game. Well, stick with him. Finish it out. But here's the advantage now. If you go over 35 during the course of an A-B, you're still okay. Oh, that's true. You started at 34. So that, that, to get those first two outs as quickly as he did, then potentially you can bring him back in two years. No hitters in Little League World Series history. This would apply. No hits through the first 11 outs. Well, that's the first one of those he has thrown all game. Just one walk, too. That's the only base runner. It's the only base runner that reached. It was a two-out walk in the first to Zach Curtis. Besides that, and it's been a lot of ground ball outs. Just one strikeout today for Martinos, but he has thrown a ton of pitch or a ton of strikes. And I think he's going to get that final out, and this game is over. How impressive was that? One ground ball after another. The greatest sinker ballers in the big leagues would be proud of the job that he did on the mound. 12 outs in a game, 10 ground ball outs, a line out, and a strikeout. That's hammer in the zone right there. The second no-hitter pitched in Curacao's Little League World Series history. Now it's a short no-hitter, four innings because of the 11 runs and the 10-run rule. But it counts, and it was just super impressive. The bats came alive, too. Seven runs in the second, four in the third. Curly Martha is a name that you're going to get to know if you watch his Little League World Series over the next 10 days. Beautiful swing at the plate. Somebody called Dallas Keuchel, too. That's right. Nine See, sinker ballers, it still works. It's all right. You can still get outs. Nine straight outs on the ground to finish the game off. With a little soft liner mixed in as well. So the kids get to celebrate. What a start for Curacao. And for Australia, it's a double elimination tournament. They're not eliminated yet. And I think the hope would be, okay, we got that out of the way. Go do some cannibals. Go do some cannibals <laughs> in the pool. Just turn the page, come back at it two days later. You never know. Yeah, you get a day to uh, decompress. So these two teams both will have tomorrow off while the second half of the field plays their first games. It's nice to see plenty of smiles on the Australian side. But the smiles are big and bright for Curacao. It's a little league, not just a country, but a little league itself with a lot of positive history coming here to Williamsport. And it looks like 2019 could be a uh, special year again for Curacao. we got lots more baseball still today. Rhode Island, Virginia will be coming up at the top of the hour up the hill at Lomedy. Kyle and I will have South Korea, Venezuela at 5 Eastern right here on ESPN, back on the international side. And then over on ESPN to Minnesota, Kentucky, the uh, final game of day one here in Williamsport. All right, it was only four innings, kids, so we better get some conditioning it's in. It's a work in. <laughs> That's a team that wants to win it all. 
What a performance by Curacao. We'll be back right after this. An opening statement for the kids from Curacao, 11-0. They beat an Australian team that we figured would come here and be competitive. They have been competitive the last several years on the international side, and they still may be, but Australia ran up against a powerhouse-looking team, Curacao, 11-0. The final score, Dave Fleming, Kyle Peterson, back with you here at Volunteer Stadium. You know, it's funny to talk to the folks from Curacao, remembering the championship team from this little league, which is now 15 years ago, how it sparked an explosion of baseball in that country. And we're seeing the proof right here on the field because they got a lot of kids who can play. And they've specifically said that. I mean, since those teams in 04 and 05 got here to the Little League World Series, that more kids just continue to play the game. That's why you've seen so many kids in the big leagues from Curacao over the last 15 years. Maybe a few more here. You never know. The swings today, and there was one. And we had a feeling we may just see this. Curly Martha. First of all, it's a cool name. Secondly, the ball comes off the bat a little bit different. Everybody likes it. Two hits on the day for Martha. No doubt her home run right there. First of this Little League World Series. You can't take that one away from you. Seven runs in the inning. And this dude was really good on the mound. The only strikeout of the day for Shender and Martino, so almost everything else was a ground ball out. Ten ground ball outs, a line drive, a strikeout, a no-hitter, and he did some of it himself. That's not a bad way to start your Little League World Series. Great defense, excellent pitching, just good all-around play from Curacao. They were clean, and they were impressive. And those kids are with Sebastian Salazar down on the field. Thank you guys, I got the team from Pabao right here, Shendry on the pitcher, Curly, uh, the big hitter today. We also have the parents over here, Aver! <laughs> the folks from uh, Curacao have traveled well. Okay, Aver, ese sentido, ese sentimiento de pegar ese jonrón, ¿qué te hace sentir? Nada, <laughs> pegar un run. <laughs> Nada. No. Se siente algo especial, ¿no? No. No? I asked him if it felt special to hit that home run. He says no. Ah, ahora dice sí. Ahora, now he says yes. Now he's changing his tune. Happy birthday to the coach. coach. Ah, he's saying happy birthday to the coach too. Look, a player who knows where his bread is, uh, is brother. All right, Shandrian, quiero preguntarte eh, tu lanzamiento hoy muy bien. ¿Cómo es jugar en este campo con tus padres, tu familia aquí apoyándote? Bien. Y algo más. ¿Qué te hace sentir? Yes, yes. Misa, misa, misa. Algo de orgullo? Sí. I asked him what it means to play not just on this field but in front of these fans and he says pride, orgullo, pride. Okay. Aquí para mi club, juntos todos. A ver. La porra del equipo del Caribe es Corso Torres guys, we send it back up to you with that. Sebastian, thank you very much. So maybe uh, shy with the microphone right in there, not shy when they get in the group huddle. Uh, no, and not shy when they're on the field either. No, I mean, that not was, at all. That was fun to watch and really impressive, and I think maybe a sign of what we're going to see here over the next few weeks, because it seems like a Curacao team that's going to match up with anybody here. I, it's part of the fun of the first day or first yeah. two days where we get to see these teams really on this field, in this setting, against this competition for the first time. And look, we can't help it. We size them up. And if you're sizing up Curacao, they look like a team that has a chance to win it all. They do. Throw a ton of strikes. Uh, and the way they defend it, too. I mean, if you, you, you've you got 10 ground ball outs in four innings, that means you can pick it up and throw it to first base. So if you're going to throw strikes, you get a defense like that behind you. You don't need a ton of offense, but they have plenty of that today, too. And the third Profar brother, who was the catcher, probably will be their pitcher in game two. We don't know that for sure, but it uh, seems likely. So they got a depth of arms. They got some power. They got some defense. Curacao, very impressive. Lots of impressive talent on the U.S. side. We're going to talk about that when we come back to Williamsport.